Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. I'm super excited to receive this new release from Round 2 Polar Lights, and it's the Discovery USS Enterprise. Let's have a look at this. I haven't opened it up, so you'll get to see it for the first time just like me. Welcome back. And of course this is the newest release from Polar Lights. It's the Discovery Star Trek USS Enterprise. One one thousandth scale. So this was just released like I was saying earlier. This kit measures nearly 18 inches or 442 millimeters. There is a separate lighting kit available for this and a separate decal sheet for the Aztec decals that cover this entire model. So I'm going to go ahead and look over this model. I can't attest to any uh, inaccuracies with this model as compared to the, the ship found in the TV show. Nor can I attest to any fit issues that this kit may ha have. This is strictly a open box review. So I will show the box art after this video. Let's open this up and have a look. Main saucer. Round two stand. Clear parts for lighting. More gray sprues. Decals. And the instruction sheet. I'll be right back. Here's the kit instructions. And it's on black and white printing. Folded in half. As you can see. General assembly instructions. Blue assembly sub-assemblies, basic symbols used within the instructions. I didn't notice any color call-outs in the instructions at all. First off, we start with the assembly of the nacelle and the pylons. Then we get into the main saucer, top and bottom, with installing the clear parts for the lighting. Then we get into the main hull, and that's also showing the clear plastic windows going in, assembling the hull together, and then assembling the entire model, placing it on the polar light stand. So that is it. The first bag contained two sprue trees of a, basically a silver gray colored plastic. Now these are the nacelles here, and uh, no evidence of slide molding or any modern uh, molding techniques for this kit so far. So let's get a closer look. Very nice detail here. Some of it, some of it appears to be exaggerated a bit. Nice detail here on the fins. And the back side of the nacelle where you would insert your clear parts. Which just shows you plenty of room for lighting. And the back side of the fins. Continuing on, this sprue was also within the same bag as the last sprue I just showed you. Uh, buzzard collectors parts here had fallen off. They were actually mounted right here in this area. But uh, just a real quick note that I see the uh, panel lining and such on this seems to be a little exaggerated. 
but I think with a few coats of primer uh, that should settle that down just a little bit. Let's get a close look. Here's an overall look of the main hull. Let's get a little closer. Here's the other side. Pretty large attachment points, which is probably a good thing. A view from the back side. Plenty of room for lighting and even possibly circuit boards. Front part of the hull and sensor dish along with the buzzard collectors. Openings for lighting. Overall view of the pylon. Back side of the pylons, there is room for very thin wiring. Close up of the pylon. Connection to the nacelle, pretty large, which is very helpful. And the other side of the pylon. Sensor dish antenna. Here's the clear parts tree, and it's one of the main features of this kit. Pretty cool that round two polar lights actually give us this, and gives us the ability to light up this model, either with the lighting kit that they sell, or you can have your own lighting that you create yourself. Now, my tree is actually missing a part, part number 109R. It's not in the bag, so I'll have to write to polar lights round two to see if they'll send me a replacement. One part here is actually coming off the tree, and the aft nacelle pieces here are pretty bent up here. But overall, it looks really good here. No evidence of slide molding whatsoever on this tree also. So let's uh, get a closer look. Clear parts for the bridge and the phaser banks. Here we have the covers to the buzzard collectors internal and external. We have the shuttle bay opening and some windows. More windows. A little closer at the windows and we can see the main promenade windows on the side of the fuselage. More close-up of the windows. Details for the aft nacelle. The detail here is quite good. More clear parts for the nacelles. More clear parts for the windows. And the missing part. As I was beginning to put this away, I found the part in the box, so I don't need to contact round two about this. The next bag had the top saucer and lower saucer section partitioned off in a single bag. So let's look at the top first. My first thoughts on this are, once again, the panel lining is too thick exaggerated for this scale, but numerous coats of primer could settle that down. Very nice here though with uh, already having the openings for the windows and a slot here at the front for the lighting for your the front of the saucer. Very cool there. 
Let's get a closer look. A little closer look here. And you can see the cutouts for the windows. Cut out on the front for the lighting to come out the front here for the writing, for the lettering. Very cool there. Another view. A little closer look here. Once again, opening for the navigation lights. So my top saucer came a little warped. And if you look at the underside, plenty of room for lighting there. Location tabs. Here's the underside of the saucer. Once again, panel lines. A little thick for the scale. But nice details here. Plenty of openings for the windows, for the torpedo tubes. Let's get a closer look. Closer of the underside. And you can see we'll have the same lighting effects going off the sides, the openings there. Great detail there. The front of the saucer. A view from one of the sides. And here's a view from the backside. Plenty of room for lighting. Looks like some mounting points for some of the lighting from the kit that you can order separately. This one did not come warped like the other one. Let's look at the stand and the decals. Here's the stand that comes with the kit. It is the larger stand and you can actually purchase this separately from Polar Lights. This is new that they finally give you hollow tube so you can run your lighting through it. Very heavy duty here too. But the underside, plenty of room here for maybe a battery pack and some switches and stuff. Here's a close-up of the decals, and the Aztec decals are sold separately for this kit. So this is, is giving the markings and some of the graphics. The, the red graphics on the side actually has some aztec built into it. The sensors themselves are uh, silver colored. The film, very thin. It looks like a very high quality decal. Let's get a little closer so you can see the little bit of aztec and graphics on the red there. Very nice register here. Another view. You can see the silver parts of the decal. Another view. Let's look at the box art and all the graphics contained. As you open the box, you'll discover on the side paneling decal placement guide and some basic colors that you can pretty much uh, duplicate on your own, but still no color callouts. Screenshots from the TV show is found on one side of the box. 
A couple of screenshots are found on one side of the box. Photograph of the decal sheet included. Side graphics of the box. Sold separately. Lighting kit featuring colored clear parts and motorized buzzard collectors. Sold separately as teching decals. The back of the box which gives us both uh, English and looks like French. Close-up view. side of the box. The other side of the box. One end of the box. The other end of the box. And there you have it. We finally get another kit from Round 2 Polar Lights. And this is the Discovery Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC 1701, 1 one thousandth scale, measures nearly 18 inches. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel. Happy modeling, everybody. Take care.